former White House COVID Task Force Testing Czar. He is Dr. Brett Girard. Doctor, it's great to have you back on. What was your reaction to the Senate vote? Um, I, I was very happy with it. I, I hoped it would have been 100 to 0 to, to vote down the mandates, but 52 to 48 is good. Look, the Democrats have tried to say that if you're against a federal government mandate, and particularly against one branch of the federal government mandate, you're anti-vaccine and anti-science and all this villainization. That's not true. I am pro-vaccine. I bet every one of those senators are as well. But we are against federal government mandates. That's not the position of the federal government. The court not only uh, illustrated the law well, but they had great public health principles why they struck it down, at least for the interim. You know, President Biden announced this federal vaccine mandate crackdown right when Afghanistan exploded. And that's when the White House chief of staff, Ron Klain, he tweeted about ramming it through with a workaround of getting around the Constitution via using OSHA. You know, it looks like this is all headed to the Supreme Court. Could it end up in the Supreme Court? I mean, a lot of conservative justices, they've, they're expressing skepticism over mandates. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but let me just say one thing, that the court's opinions were often clearer about public health than the Biden administration have been. They said the mandates were overly broad. They didn't apply to people who really didn't need to get vaccinated at all, that they didn't take into account things like natural immunity, uh, or other uh, mitigating measures. So I, I, I think the courts, from a public health standpoint, were completely sound and completely defensible. You know, the law is the law, and, and I don't go there. I went to medical school, not the law school. No, we hear you. But, you know, the 1905, people misapprehend the 1905 Supreme Court ruling. It said the power of vaccinations is up to the states, not the central federal government. That was a smallpox epidemic at that time. So that's what they're talking about. It's a slippery slope when you have a central, central federal response overseeing what is going on in people's personal lives when it should be done at the local level, right? I 100% I, I agree with that. And public health is a state and local uh, uh, endeavor. It really is. The federal government controls certain things like ports and international travel. But public health is state and local. That's the way our system works. It's true for Ebola. It's true for COVID. It's, it's true for uh, drug uh, use and substance use disorders. That's the way it should work. Get closer to the people, keep the federal government out of it, and certainly keep them out of interactions between a doctor and his or her patient. Now we've got this. The governors of Maine and New York, and I think New Hampshire, they're talking about deploying the National Guard in response to dangerously low staffing at statewide medical facilities due to the pandemic. Also, business owners cannot afford the Biden mandate. They're understaffed across the board. They can't afford to fire workers right now. Their challenge is to get workers, not laying off workers. Well, let me, let me be clear about that first point. The National Guard, when you deploy the National Guard, these people are working. If you deploy a health worker in the National Guard, they're the people working in hospitals and ambulances. It's a zero-sum game. That makes absolutely zero sense. It's not like pulling the active duty army in. These are people in your community that you pull out of their jobs and send them somewhere else. That is not going to solve the problem. And it seems pretty obvious to me, having worked with the National Guard for, for decades, how that actually works. Final word on this. The media raised a five-alarm fire on the Omicron variants. The CDC, though, says only one in 43 known Omicron cases in the U.S. have been hospitalized. Almost all the rest had mild symptoms. We have researchers in South Africa saying that, too. But now we have the leaders of Pfizer and BioNTech talking about multiple doses equal one full vaccination, meaning it could be three doses or four. And Dr. Fauci is saying it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when the definition of fully vaccinated changes. Uh, what is your word on that? Um, my word on that is we still have a, a lot more to know. And remember, our goal is not, it, look, if I got the sniffles for one day and had no long-term effects, that's not a vaccine failure. That's not our goal to eliminate everyone from ever getting the sniffles. Um, it's really to keep you out of the hospital and out of serious illnesses. Right now, you know, we need to be concerned about it, but the vaccines are holding up. Um, it may not be perfect protection, but people are not in the hospital. They're not dying. Of course, there are going to be people who are hospitalized with Omicron, particularly the elderly 
where vaccine protection has worn off um, okay. and those with a lot of comorbid conditions. Dr. Brett That will happen, but don't get alarmed. We hear you. Dr. Brett thanks for your guidance there. It's good to see you.